Finding Common Battlegrounds is an attempt by two brothers, one conservative, the other progressive, to have civil conversations about politics with a little help from their friends. So we're going to do an inaugural addendum podcast because clearly we had more to say on this. Last night after we stopped recording, all three of us kept going at it for 30 minutes. Um, and then Ryan emailed me today saying he was, you know, I was right about a few things. He was right about some stuff because he'd done some extra research. And I had some burning questions, just burning holes in my brain all day that I felt like I should have addressed last night and I didn't. So we're just doing a quick addendum. We hope you listen to this after you listen to the, the podcast about withdrawing from Afghanistan. We both have a little more we want to add. Um, Ryan, do you want to go first? Yeah. So um, I, I feel a little bad that I was throwing the Afghan security forces under the bus as much as I was. Uh, further research suggests. <laughs> I'm going to right? throw them under tonight. Oh, okay. So further research suggests, right? And we we kind of did this as we in that 30 minute after time, right? That the Taliban very quickly, once the agreement was signed, they started to get aggressive and they cut off supply lines. And that's part of the reason why some of them started to literally had no food and, and walked away from their posts, right? So some of the stuff Josh was saying was absolutely true. The other thing that Josh was saying had to do with uh, the air vehicles, right? So the, the um, jets and the helicopters. And according to military experts, um, if those are not maintained, you're basically going to lose the capability to use them for, you know, after about three months. You got three months and then the maintenance becomes, I mean, like it's so necessary that they can't work, which I think makes this really complicated, right? Because I'm assuming that those contractors were still in country doing the maintenance up until a month ago, maybe two, right? Like I don't know the actual date, which would still suggest to me like, okay, clearly they're going to lose <laughs> if they can't maintain those. Uh, that was another thing that I got kind of got wrong. Um, but if they still have access to them, why didn't they use them, right? So that that's still like, I'm, this is so confusing and there's just not sufficient information for, let, I think, us to make a good- Let me yeah. jump in. We're, we're going to pause the video because I have two videos I want you to watch and then we'll talk okay. about them. So so let's pause the recording and then we'll come I back. I can keep it recording. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll cut this. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, for, I was going to have you do this before we started. Oh, that's fine. Um, so let me- Okay, I'm going to link these two in the chat. They're both the same thing. I'll, I'll just link one if you want more. Okay. I'll link them. But there's a bunch of videos of this. Okay. So watch this video. All it is, it's U.S. soldiers trying to train Afghan troops how to do jumping jacks. And they can't do I'm, it. I'm watching. There's, a, there's one that's even funnier. This one's even funnier. They can't do jumping jacks. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of, oh, wow. They're certainly not in unison. Okay, so so we'll okay, pick up. I watched the first one. We'll uh, pick the recording back up right here. Okay, if yeah, you're going to edit I'm that out. The, yeah, I'll total, or I'll edit it in. So what I just showed Ryan was a couple of videos of U.S. soldiers trying to train Afghan troops to do jumping jacks. And Ryan, would you agree they, they can't even, and there's a bunch of these videos out there. They can't even do jumping jacks. Okay. So, yeah. What does that mean, though? Right. And again, here's where my bleeding heart liberal mind just kicks in. And I'm like, did they have a different childhood where they didn't have gym classes? Yes. They weren't taught that's, to do That's these exactly things? what I was just going to say. We take okay. for granted that we learn how to do this stuff in second grade. They, right. These guys can't even read. They didn't learn, they didn't have gym class. This is a whole different world these guys are coming from. So, the main thing that's been burning a hole in my head, and I didn't know how to phrase this last night. I had two questions last night that I wanted to ask for, okay. so you guys understand. And I didn't know in the heat of the moment how to phrase either of them without turning them into straw man arguments, forcing Ryan to defend a position. Hi, Deb. I didn't want to. I didn't want to make straw man arguments, putting Ryan in a position where he didn't want to be. I don't like doing that. Right. So now that I've had a minute to think about these questions, here's the first one. Um, and this is the most important one. It really is. The Afghan 
troops folded. Okay. Yeah. And and the the saying that everybody in America has been saying is if they're not willing to defend themselves, why should we fight for them? And and showing this video, maybe they wouldn't fight for themselves. Maybe they couldn't fight for themselves. Maybe they were just that bad. Okay. We don't know. And but ultimately it doesn't matter. Uh you you know, a lot of people, Ryan said it last night, and I get this, people have been saying they don't have the will to fight. Oh, uh, Biden said that in his speech. He did. They don't have the will to fight. How, you know, what am I going to do about that? Um, oh, since 2001, 60,000 Afghan troops have died fighting the Taliban. That Which is a fair point. You made that last night, and I totally agree. That that's they a good do point. have a will to fight. Maybe they just couldn't fight. So here's here's my real question. And this is not an attack on you because mm -hmm. I'm in the minority here. Everybody in America is saying, if they're not willing to fight, why should we defend them? Right. I would hope that the answer to that question is because we're good people and we can defend them. Okay. I don't know if they weren't willing to fight. I don't know if they couldn't fight or if they wouldn't fight. I don't know. I don't know if it matters. They, yeah. they didn't. If they didn't want us in their country, that's a different thing. But they wanted us there. They wanted us to stay. And and for us to, you know, why is it morally wrong to defend somebody if they can't defend themselves or if they won't defend themselves? Why is that? Why is everybody in America saying that we're not going to do that? Why is, you know, the, the American in me understands. If you're not willing to do it, then I'm not willing to help you. The American in me understands, but the Christian in me can't accept that. I just can't accept that. Who cares that, that they can't defend themselves or won't defend themselves? We could have. And look yeah. at the cost. And, and that's been burning in me all day long. And my other question was, it's not nearly as important. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just going to point out that we have over 500 permanent military bases in the, all over the world. Those are just outside of the U.S. Uh, one report said up to 750. Okay, that's a lot of mm -hmm. permanent military bases. We have almost 30,000 troops stationed in South Korea permanently. Yeah. And and suddenly when it comes to Afghanistan, we're all everybody just became cons fiscally conservative and we're saying we're not willing to leave a presence there. We have 500 bases throughout the rest of the world. Why do we not care about these people? I, I, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't, I don't have an mm -hmm. answer for that and I'm not attacking you on that. Right, right. These are the, these are the two things that have been burning in my head. Why do we not care about them when we have bases all over the rest of the world? I don't know. And why? what's the moral objection to defending people if they can't defend yeah. themselves? I, I, I don't understand it. I, I would hope yeah. that as Americans, we would say, we're going to defend them because we're good people and that's the right thing to do. You know, okay, I guess if it costs money, if it costs lives. But yeah, those are the two um, questions. You don't have to even address them. I just wanted, well, I wanted to clarify my position. Yeah. I am in the min minority. You are in the minority, which is interesting. And I, again, I'm I'm having a really hard time, like not agreeing because, with you because, because I you're the do agree with liberal. you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I, I agree with both sides. That's the problem. It's, this is a hard. There's one. this is a there's hard no one. right answer to either of these. So you are on your first correct. one. Yeah, on your first one, it, there are like two pieces, right? Could they not fight, which I think is an interesting question. And then whether they could fight or not, if we're in a position to defend somebody, shouldn't we do it? I think the answer for the second one should be yes. Um, some of the stuff I read today kind of gives me a sense of why we did what we did. And I didn't make these decisions, right? But I think I get a better sense of why we did that, it. That article you sent me was good. I mean, yeah. I, I agree. There's good yeah. arguments on both sides. Continue. Right. On, on the first piece... I have to wonder, right? The Taliban is made up of Afghan people, right? And they can clearly fight. They kick they're ass, good. apparently, right? Yeah, good. So, so I really struggle with the idea that the Afghan security forces can't fight, right? Like, clearly, Afghan people can fight. They, I had, I had that they same wiped today. Russia's butts, yeah. right? And they just did the same thing to us. Right. I think. I think part of it might be that we didn't know how to train them to fight and the Taliban knows how to train their people to fight. That's the yeah. only thought that occurred to me because I, I think they must just suck. Yeah, and if, if you look at the numbers, <laughs> they lost right. 60,000 troops. We lost 3,000. And yeah. we were really spearheading all these attacks. Mm -hmm. but they lost a lot of troops. I don't think they were very good, but I, I don't know. 
So yeah. valid point you make. I had the same thought today. Yeah. So I, I, I really, I, I, I said this, I think at the tail end of my email that I sent to you today is that I think here in the U S we don't have enough information to really judge the Afghan security forces, right? What you sent me okay. complicated my thinking. I was like, oh yeah, they just gave up. They walked away. Which, as it, soon as you said, actually, some of them sense. didn't have food and maybe their planes weren't working, right? Like it, it, suddenly it becomes much more complicated. And now I can't just throw them under the bus and but, be like, they walked away. But ultimately, does it matter? Mm. That's what I'm asking. Right. So that's the second part of the question. If somebody can't defend themselves, should we do it if we can, right? And I think- or Even if they won't, even if they yeah, won't, I don't know that yeah. it matters. If we change the context, right? So, and I think this is true for both of us because uh, it's actually happened to me at times, right? But change the context. Uh, and I think you used an example like this just yesterday, right? You see an old lady, but it doesn't even have to be an old lady. You, you see somebody being attacked. They're Here, Here's a better example because I read it right. in a book just last week. There was like a monk that had taken a vow of nonviolence, non-violence and he was yeah. being picked on and he wouldn't defend himself. And then the hero rushed in to defend him. And we're all right. okay with that. So that's a we better are. example than the really bad one I tried to pull out. My, yeah. That's when I was thinking of this question, but I abandoned it because I didn't want to turn it into a straw man attack against you. But yes, continue. Right. But I, but I think that's the, the, so we move the context, right? And both of us would probably defend the underdog. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, people don't really understand it when it comes to sports and me. I don't have a team, right? In any of the sports, right? And I, I don't have a team. Uh, I will sometimes vote, you know, root for the U.S. Uh, in soccer, but that's partly because I just root for the underdog, and the U.S. actually often <laughs> sucks at soccer, except the women's team, you, right? You unpatriotic um, piece of crap. <laughs> well, it's because I don't have a team, right? Like, it, all right, I get it, it. I get it. Sociologically, I, I fully understand that. Like, if I had been born and raised in Dallas, Texas, right, then maybe it would be the Dallas Cowboys. But if I was born and raised in Wisconsin, then suddenly I'm going to be all for the Green Bay Packers, right? Like it's all a quirk of where you happen to live. And as soon as I realize that, right, that it's all just like completely socially constructed and not meaningful in any way, it's just a quirk of where you live, it's chance. Teams went out of the window and I was like, I don't care about teams. I, I think, so I root I think for it's a, uh, an extrapolation of tribalism. It's a way for us to embrace that because it's part of our evolution. Yeah. Uh, without actually killing people. I think that's what it is. Yeah, you're right. And sports is basically um, rehearsal for war. That's probably like the origins of sport, right? And it, it is the origin of sport. Okay, we're getting into um, the weeds without Tom here to yell We at are. Us. I, know, I know. But this, this comes back to the issue of like, I root for the underdog. If I saw an underdog getting picked on, I will go defend them. And I do this when I play paintball, right? So when I'm playing paintball, if I see somebody who's, you know, everybody's going after them and they're the underdog, I will sacrifice myself to defend them. So I get it if we switch the context. Why I wonder now in this context, am I like, you know what? It was time to leave. And that article that I sent you, I think did a pretty good job. It made a good, the public good opinion, for that. right? Public opinion in the U S had basically said, okay, let's go in, let's get them. Then we shifted gears and we didn't really have a good plan. And Tom made this pretty clear in the podcast, but then we began nation building. I think we both agree. We never should have done that. But once we did, like we, we tied our hands, but, but there was but still support for it. for it initially. And people were still like, let's make those guys democratic. We can do it. Yeah. Which is a terrible but, idea. But then people lose steam and all of a sudden we're left with a mess in our yes. hands. And, and people and, lost interest. No one cared about the and, war. And anymore. that's the problem. And now everybody's yeah. saying, well, if they're not willing to fight for themselves, screw them. They can all die. And I just can't get behind that yeah. sentiment. Well, and I, I see your point and I, I hated your argument because it's a good argument, right? That's why I hated the <laughs> argument. You kept saying, what's the price on this, right? And I was like, well, and then I, I did send you today, right? Our national debt is bigger than any other country in the world. It's $28 trillion. Technically speaking, we're the poorest country on the planet. If just simple math, <laughs> that's true. It's, it's so sad. And so I don't want to put a number on it. And then your second point here about these long-term bases, you're absolutely right. We still have uh, people stationed in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. My, I've been so scanning. Tom lived there. Tom, Tom lived, lived there. there. His, right. his brother, Matt, was born there that I'm yep. friends with. His dad was stationed there. Uh, my father-in-law was stationed in Germany during the Korean War, which makes very little sense in my mind, but that's where he was. 
And his his joke, I mean, he, he he never actually saw like, you know, battle. He was like an accountant or something in the war. And I have to tell his joke, Gary, Gary Wayne Morgan, I'm going to get this out in the public. He's got Alzheimer's. He's, he's dying. But uh, his joke was, we never retreated. We just backspaced, which I think is <laughs> hilarious. Right. So that's it. That's his standing joke that he never actually saw, you know, uh, wartime, you know, actual active duty. Mm-hmm. But but he was there. Uh it's hard to argue that we couldn't have maintained a military base. Now, I think there is a substantive difference between, say, Okinawa and South Korea and Germany. Yes, we have military troops there, but are any of them really like we're going to fight right now? Um, do, South do Korea see? is the only one that's even under threat. Yeah, because right? the and others, it's like training. Strategic, well, there's strategic, there's strategic bases. We can refuel there. Germany but, is like where we do a lot of our medical stuff, right? So like but, almost all the soldiers who got injured and, and in that's Afghanistan a good got flown to Germany. Yeah. Good point. But at the same token, where else are we going to do more good by having a base? Because yeah. we just, we're going to see all, maybe millions of people suffer. I mean, it, it, yeah, it will be millions of people will suffer because of, of the pullout. Where, where should have we had a base that's better than that? It does, you know, that's yeah. the question. Yeah, and, and, I, and I'm again, not it's disagreeing a hard one. with you. Yeah. And, and, and obviously money is an issue, but but why is it just so much an issue now keeping 10,000 troops in Afghanistan when we have 30,000 troops in South Korea? Mm-hmm. And we haven't had problems with Little Rocket Man for quite some time. <laughs> but we, but it, it, I'm the last person on the planet that wants to play the race card. You know that. Mm-hmm. I hate people that play the race card. Right. But I've been wondering all day, are, do we just not care that because these people are Muslim, are we, are we willing to just pull the plug on it because of that? I, I hate playing the race card. I'm not a Muslim apologist. You know this. Mm-hmm. But why are we willing to keep 30,000 people in South Korea and Germany and Japan and in over 500 bases all around the world? We, well, but we do have bases in Saudi Arabia. Now, granted, they're not. We uh, still have some in Iraq. That's what doesn't make sense. I know. It, why? It's really weird. It's I, a fair I point. think it's political. I think it's. I think the politicians just think, well, American people are no longer interested. Let's get out. And they don't care about the cost yeah. of people on the ground. Because well, they're not okay. people. Yeah, I, 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 was, it, was it Kant that said uh, one, one death a tragedy, a million deaths a statistic? Yeah. I think well, we just I don't, don't understand mm-hmm. how bad this is going to be. People, I mean, it's, it's going to be so bad we just don't even try to comprehend it. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. None of well, this makes sense to me. No, I, I agree. Uh, let me, I'm not trying to defend the position. I'm, I'm thinking through and, it with And you. I'm not trying okay. to make you defend it. Right. That's why we're doing this tonight. Yes. And that's why I didn't bring either of these up last night, because I didn't want to make you defend these positions. Right. That would make it, that would be straw man. Yeah. And we're not playing that game. No. Um, so one of the things that I'm thinking about is, okay, let's imagine that we do decide we're going to keep one base in Afghanistan. Not however many we had. I don't know how many we had, but we had lots of bases, right? But we keep one base near Kabul and we staff it with 10,000. And then, of course, we can still, you know, send out sorties with planes and stuff like that. But what's to prevent the Taliban from basically taking the rest of the country? You see what I'm saying, right? Because like, arguably, that's what they were already doing. They were doing that as soon as that agreement was signed. So that, that was the other thing that I looked back at. I was like, I mean, Trump did sign this agreement, right? As soon as he signed it, they started to get aggressive. They had an yeah. end date. They knew when the U.S. was leaving, and, and, it's a valid and they got question. aggressive. Well, you know, how much support would we have? Uh, the question is, how much support would we have need to put there to keep yeah. the Afghan force actually fighting? Yeah, because clearly we were the backbone there. Yeah. I don't know the answer because I'm not a general on the ground there. Mm-hmm. But obviously, when we pulled out, they fell apart. They couldn't fight yeah. without us. <sighs> And here's the other thing that makes no sense to me. Ostensibly, we went there to to get rid of the terrorists. We went there to get rid Mm -hmm. of Al-Qaeda. And we haven't had another 9-11 in 20 years. So if that was the goal, it was stunningly successful, I would, you Mm -hmm. could argue. And we already, and since the uh, Taliban took over uh, Bagram Air Base and released all of the terrorists that we had there, we now have Al-Qaeda back. They're already back in in Afghanistan. We already have reports of them operating again. So everything that we just did to get rid of terrorists, to get rid of terrorism, to protect the US, we just threw that out the window. So 
so even even if you you made the because uh, I agree we had this mission creep problem we went there to get rid of the terrorists then mission creep and nation building it was really dumb but the original goal which we all agreed on getting rid of the terrorists has been undermined uh, completely complete it's gone it's out the window now what was the point yeah we just spent two uh, trillion dollars and went well let's start from from ground zero over. that's what we yeah. just did. It makes yeah, no and sense. I guess we'll have to see. And I certainly hope that it's not another, you know, 3000 Americans dead in a plane attack me, or something me like too, that. Brother. Me and too, and granted, you know, we have made a number of changes. Uh, I, I'm not supposed to say this, right. But Delta does now arm some pilots. I, I sure. know that with firsthand knowledge and they lock the doors and those doors but don't that's, open. That's hardly the. the right. But it, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's a, right. It's, it's, addressing the last battle. Uh, one last thing that occurred to me, you know, as you were describing this, why might we have pulled out of there where we have all these other permanent bases? Technically, we were still at war, right? So we're, I think we're still at war in Korea. I don't know that we ever rescinded that war declaration. I, I think you may be right. Right? right. But I think in all the other places where we were ever at war, those, those declarations of war have all been rescinded. We're not technically at war anywhere. But I, I think, and I, maybe I'm not right on this, right? Maybe we need to look that up. But I wonder if the reason why they're saying this is the longest war is because there was a declaration of war made and we were still technically at war and now we're ending the war, right? Um, so maybe that's why they were like, oh, we got to end this because we're at war. Um, maybe, I wonder if that was it's it. just politicking. It, doesn't it is. It's totally to politics. Me. It's that's because, just totally politics. Because you can make all the same arguments that were made last night about the thing, the conflict in Korea. Well, mm -hmm. if the South Koreans aren't willing to fight for themselves, why should we do it? We've had 30,000 troops there for a long, long time. Yeah. Admittedly, they do fight for themselves. <laughs> and so why every, do we have 30? Every, no, well, I agree. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know exactly why we still have all those troops there. Right. I don't, I, I mean, we practice war games. It's probably a strategic base. I'm sure that's all true. But in Korea, every young man has to serve in the military, mm -hmm. right? It's same as Israel and other places. Uh, and I think that just came up because there was like a K-pop band and one of the people was able to get out of it because he was like really famous in a K-pop band. And I was like, okay, I guess that's a reason to get out of it. But yeah, I hope um, it was the Gangnam Style guy. <laughs> Uh, I, I, all I know is it made BBC, right? And that's where I saw it. I was like, oh, okay. I guess if but, you're famous, but enough, again, you get out of it. But. I mean, you're you're presenting a perfect scenario as why we should nation, why we should stay there. Because look at South South Korea is flourishing. They're it's doing a, great. It's a yeah. a beacon of light to the world. But we had to stay there. We're still there, but we're not willing to stay. Yeah, but do we have to be there now? I mean, I wonder. I, I don't like, know. If I don't we think pulled so. out, do you think North Korea would go after him? No. Be I don't think so. And, and right? you're not going to like this argument. Um, everybody was mad at Trump when he went over there and tried to negotiate with Little Rocket mm -hmm. Man. And everybody yeah. said, we're going to get in a nuclear war. This isn't going to work. It works pretty good. We haven't had any problems with Rocket Man in, in several years. Okay. So I don't know if I don't know if they're dumb enough to just immediately invade if we pulled out, but we could be back there pretty quick. But yeah, uh, the, the capital of South Korea is like a couple miles from the DMZ, so they, yeah, there's a lot of people far. to rockets rocket attack. But I I don't know why we have thirty thousand troops there and we're not willing to leave ten thousand in Afghanistan. Millions of people I, are going to suffer. Know. So this yeah. was a hard one. Thanks everybody for for coming back. We we're, we are so in the. This is why we have Tom. We're so in the weeds, <laughs> and we just keep going. So we miss you, Tom. But thank you everybody for for coming back. This was a really hard one. I was conflicted on it. Obviously, Ryan has. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a mess. Yeah, but there's no good answer here. This just the ho whole thing hopefully hopefully this challenged your perspective and and at least made you think. Um, and thanks for listening and, and supporting us. You guys are, are awesome. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. The music is by Ben Sound. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and not those of their employers. For more information or more episodes, you can find us at findingcommonbattlegrounds.com.